Shalom, everyone. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our uh, special edition uh, of Kabbalah Cafe in honor of uh, the, the fast day and uh, hopefully some inspiration in, in, uh, in connection with that. One of the major issues that are being discussed in Israel is what's going to be with Aza or in English, Gaza, after the war. So, of course, we want the, that uh, that Am Yisrael that was in Gush Katif should go back to Aza, and uh, Gaza, Aza is part of Eretz Yisrael. I like hearing on the uh, on the from radio shows before Shabbos uh, the the candle lighting times for Jerusalem and Bnei Brak. And then for Aza, so that there are definitely many of our brothers and sisters over there right now, and uh, also unfortunately the hostages. But nonetheless, we hope that we're going to go back and we're going to we're going to inhabit, uh, re-inhabit Aza. Um, but aside for that, uh, there are of course those that say that uh, that, that it, whatever. I, I don't want to. Um, for themselves, but what I'm trying to say is as follows, that there's no question that the terror cells all around Aza have um, have been way too close to to the to Sterot and the other communities around and close to Aza. There needs to be a very strong buffer zone which separates between us and the terrorists of several kilometers. That is a very simple uh, safety mathematical equation that the further away we are, the safer we are. Which which means that we have to push them away. Not we have to move away, but they have to move, move further away. And the same thing applies to the north. That Hezbollah, unfortunately, has been defying the quote-unquote UN the resolution that there has to be a buffer zone, but of course the UN are being uh, no less uh, cooperative with the terrorists. So as far as I'm concerned, they, they're pretty much in the same category. And we're going to try to connect this point now to the fast day in which we find ourselves. Before we get to that, I want to answer the riddle that I wrote in the message this morning, of what this year is going to be discussing. Where do you find the Beit HaMikdash referred to in the Parsha? Now, it's a difficult equation because, because the Beit HaMikdash was built way after Yaakov coming down to Mitzrayim. Even the Mishkan, the tabernacles, was built way after. So how much more so the Beit HaMikdash, the permanent structure of the Holy Temple, was built way after the Yaakov coming down and meeting Yosef in Mitzrayim. Nonetheless, when Yosef met Binyamin, he was totally overwhelmed with emotion and they both cried on each other's shoulders. Vayef Yosef, Yosef cried on Binyamin's shoulders, Binyamin bacha al tzavarav, and Binyamin cried on Yosef's shoulders. The simple meaning is quite obvious. Why did each one cry on the other one's shoulders? Because out of emotion. In general, there's a tremendous amount of emotion and and uh, crying, tears in this week's parsha, both out of sadness and also um, excitement, overwhelming of feelings. But there's a deeper meaning why Yosef Yaman cried on Yosef's shoulders. And that is that they each had Ruach HaKodesh. They each had divine inspiration. 
And they knew that there will be a Beit HaMikdash or a tabernacle built in the other's portion in Eretz Yisrael. Binyamin knew that the Mishkan of Shiloh, the tabernacle of Shiloh, will be built in the portion of Yosef. And Yosef knew that the two Batei Mikdash, the two temples, will be built in the portion of Binyamin. And because they knew that eventually they would be destroyed, the Mishkan Shila would be destroyed and the two Batei Mikdash would be destroyed. Yosef cried on Binyamin's shoulders because the two temples in Binyamin's portion in Eretz Yisrael, which is Yerushalayim, which connects obviously to the 10th of Tevet, as we'll connect it soon, will be destroyed. So he was very sorry for him. Binyamin cried on Yosef's shoulders because Yosef, uh, Binyamin knew that the Mishkan Shilo that will stand for hundreds of years, eventually will be destroyed. And it's wonderful to have a Beit HaMikdash and a Mishkan, but when it's destroyed, that's very, very hurtful. Anytime you have destruction of a home of Hashem, or or Chas Shalom, someone in Am Yisrael, it's something which is unbearable. And so each one cried for the other's sorrow. The obvious question that can be asked, and the Rebbe asks this question, is if if they had so much Ruach HaKodesh, divine inspiration, why didn't they just cry for the Mishkan or the Beit HaMikdash, which will, which will be destroyed in their own portion? So Benjamin should cry for the Tuba Te Mikdash, and Yosef should cry for the Mishkan Shilo that would be destroyed. And the very powerful explanation that the Rebbe says is as follows. It's good to cry and to sympathize. But when it comes to our own issues, our own problems, there's no time to cry. If you have a spare minute, if you have a spare day, if you have some time, utilize that time to make a difference. Utilize that time to do more mitzvahs and to build and to do everything and anything in your power that this mishkan, this tabernacle, or this Beit HaMikdash should not be destroyed. If you know that something is going to happen to, to your friend or to your colleague or to your brother in his life, then cry, embrace, sympathize, but for our own issues, own problems, there's no time to 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 cry or to simple or or to or to to be to be sad. This is obviously a very special message for this day in which we are marking the beginning of the destruction of the Beit Hamikdash. Don't forget. We're not mourning today, directly at least, the, the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. Today, we're mourning for the beginning of the destruction, which, which led eventually to the destruction. This is why we fast on this day. Because on this day, we mark the beginning, the onset of the destruction. On this day, Nebuchadnezzar made a siege on Yerushalayim, on Jerusalem. And two and a half years later, on the 17th of Tammuz, the siege was broken in. Now, let's pay attention to what a siege is. A siege is a very strong entity. Let's call it a buffer zone. It's not a, a lot of space, but, but the concept of this area is the concept of, of the of the wall of a siege of a human siege or whatever it was the soldiers is that no one can go in and no one can go out so this reinforces the importance of protection for Eretz Yisrael unfortunately the siege that we marked was the opposite that was the siege going against Eretz Yisrael and once there is a siege, there is a, God forbid, may Hashem protect us, a very good chance 
or a very easy chance that those that are creating the siege should should have close contact in the case of Yerushalayim to destroy Yerushalayim and to destroy the Beit HaMikdash because they're sitting right there on the border. So what's the message? We have to move the terrorists and the, and the evil people as far away from the border as possible. We have to strengthen our territory, that the, our border should be as strong as possible. So that's as far as the, the physical siege is concerned. In addition to that, we have to remember that there is a spiritual border that we have to strengthen. This is based on what the Rambam writes. That what is the... The point is that we should do Teshuvah, we should repent. What is Yerushalayim? This applies to every fast. But on the fast that we mourn the destruction of Yerushalayim, this point is even stronger. Because Yerushalayim is made up of the of two words. Yir'ah, Shalem. Yir'ah is fear. Shalem is complete. Complete fear of Hashem. And when we, we recognize that there can be a siege on a siege from the Sahara, a siege from the evil inclination and from the evil people on your on your Shamayim on fear of Hashem. Even if the siege is only on a very minor issue of Yiddishkeit. But the Yitzhahara is going against our commitment and our fulfillment of Torah Mitzvot. We have to go as far from it as possible. We have to create a positive siege. We have to create a siege of Torah, a siege of Kedusha. In the world of going on a diet, they say, don't bring the enemy home. In other words, don't create any kind of of temptation of something that's going to cause that the enemy, that the uh, unhealthy foods should come into your body. You can keep it in the in the uh, cabinet, but don't put it on the table. The more, the closer, the closer that the enemy comes to to the to the uh, the, the the safety area the easier it is, God forbid, for the enemy to infiltrate the, the, the safe area. Therefore, we, we say to a Nazir, a Nazarite, he's not allowed to walk next to a vineyard. Because not allowed to have wine. So, if you if you go next to a vineyard, you're, then your temptation for wine may be strengthened. So go make a roundabout a far roundabout all around where you're a roundabout where where the 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 forbidden item is and therefore you won't you won't co even come close to it another another example is there's the prohibition of yichud that a man and a woman that are not married are not allowed to be in a closed area, especially the married woman, but even with not a non-married woman. And so the Chachamim, the our sages have given for us boundaries, a buffer zone to push away a, a situation which can become dangerous, unhealthy materially or spiritually, and move it far away. I'll give you another example. There are two mitzvahs in the Torah where the Torah says you have to go far away from it. First of all, this, this uh, prohibition of yichud. And 
Um, well, actually, it refers it refers more to a woman during her twelve days of impurity that there that the there is not allowed to be physical contact between the husband and wife until the wife goes to the mikvah. And so the Torah says, Lot they should not even come close. Because if they come close, they might come to do something which is which is forbidden. The same thing is with Lashon Hara. It says, I'm, I'm sorry, not Lashon Hara, it says from something which, from saying a lie. You're not allowed to say a lie. It doesn't only say you cannot lie. It says, Midvar Sheker Tirchak. You should go far away from it. In other words, some things which may be more tempting or easier to violate, the Torah teaches us we have to go far away from it. So this is a lesson not only for our government and how to act to push far away the enemies, but also for us that we should strengthen ourselves in the observance of Torah and mitzvot. We want to influence the government. We ourselves need to be strong and need to need to strengthen our own um, observance of Torah and mitzvot, and hopefully that will give us strength to the government that they should also uh, act accordingly in the literal sense of pushing our enemies very, very far away. And so let's uh, conclude this year by saying that um, when it comes to building the Beit HaMikdash, building the Yerushalayim, and that's exactly what, what this day is about, let's do our best not to spend too much time crying and 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 uh, and being sad for the situation, but the action is the main thing. The action is that which is going to take us out of this absurd situation. And so we have a special koch. We have a special energy being here in Yerushalayim. And if you're not here in Yerushalayim, you should come soon. And you should move here to Yerushalayim. Now, when it comes to being in Yerushalayim, we have the strength to strengthen Yerushalayim. And the more mitzvahs that we do has a stronger impact than, than almost anyone else around the world. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, you're welcome to join us for an early mincha today because there's a Torah reading. Also, tomorrow morning, we have a big kiddush, a full meal. You're all invited to join us for the Shabbat after Asara B'Tevet. Don't forget, we do not eat until Kiddush tonight. So we'll try to do an early, a little bit of an early Mariv, and uh, the all the information will be very soon on the WhatsApps. Um, I'll, I'll let you know the exact times. So be well, have a wonderful Shabbat, and may Hashem help that the fast should be turned this moment into a feast. All the best.